Hello and welcome to Spread Book Joy. Today I'm going to review Julia and the Shark by Kieran Millwood Hargrave, illustrated by Tom DeFreston. If you're new to the channel, I'm Jack, I'm a teacher and I like to recommend great books for children or adults who like to read great children's literature. And today I'm reviewing a book by one of my favourite children's authors, Kieran Millwood Hargrave, and it's illustrated by her artist husband, Tom DeFreston. I was very lucky to receive an advanced reader copy. This book is not out until the 2nd of September where it will be published in hardback and it looks to be absolutely stunning and I will be getting a copy of it for myself. But I just felt thrilled to receive this advanced reader copy uh, for an impartial review. Uh, and it is an impartial review. I wouldn't promote a book that I didn't fully engage with and enjoy, even though I'm telling you I'm a big fan of hers. I did ask a request the publisher send me an advanced reader copy and I was just so thrilled to get one. But I knew the minute I heard that she was going to be collaborating with her husband, who is a fantastic artist, and she is just a brilliant writer, very talented, I knew it would be a very beautiful book, and it is. It's very beautiful aesthetically, and it's a beautifully narratively constructed and written story, and it's got that high quality, engaging, poetic, lyrical language that you come to expect from one of her books. The book is about a child called Julia and uh, her family who go up to the Shetland Islands because dad is going to be reprogramming a lighthouse so that it becomes automated, and mum, who is a marine biologist, is using that time and taking that opportunity to uh, research one of her passions, which is a Greenland shark, or Greenland shark, I don't know who you call it, Greenland, like the place, Greenland shark, and the Greenland shark, mum believes, because we don't know how old they are, the oldest one that's been found and dated is was around 400 years old but could be older sharks out there because they're so slow moving and slow aging mum believes they may hold the key to slowing down human deterioration because her mother had got early onset dementia and she believes that researching how these sh sharks age and may be the key to unlocking some way of solving the problem of aging and deteriorating as a human so mum's going to be doing that while dad's uh, fixing the lighthouse. Julia is a great character. She's um, an only child. They have another, they have a cat called Noodle, which I'm always appreciative of a cat in a book. And they move into the lighthouse. It's a very remote island. And the landscape and the setting are perfect. The landscape's wild and beautiful. And the weather is changeable. It's, you know, it's the Shetland Islands is Scotland. It's really wild and remote. And actually the landscape and the setting reflect the kind of ever-changing dynamic between the, par the parents and the child and the emotions and the turbulent emotions that are felt in this book. So the story really is about family and mental health and how the mental health of a parent affects a child, um, how the mental health of someone in a family affects those around them. Uh, Julia is a great example of how children's, uh, how attuned children are to the emotional wavelength of their parents, the slightest change in the parent's emotional state. And children are really attuned to that. And I thought that was represented really well here. Um, so as weeks go by, Julia uh, makes friends on the island with a boy called Kin. Kin's family run the local laundrette slash library. And they're another example of, of a great, you know, very close family. Kin and Julia bond over their shared love of the natural world and their curiosity about the world around them. Julia uh, loves nature, loves animals, as you'd expect, with a marine biologist's mother. Kin is a keen astronomer, and they, they immediately hit it off. And their friendship isn't without its challenges. Some issues do arise. Kin is also being bullied by another child on the island called Adrian. Um, and I won't go into things too much because I don't want to do any spoilers, but the sort of setup um, is that yeah, they're on the island and mum is spending weeks and weeks searching for this shark and as the weeks go by there's no sighting of the shark and mum's behaviour starts to change. Uh, she becomes quite obsessive and a bit erratic and her, her personality seems to change and Julia is really attuned to it and concerned about it, really worried about it. And as the story goes on, and as mum's behaviour is changing more and Julia becomes more and more anxious, Julia starts to dream about the shark. And the dreams of the shark and the imagery are very powerful. 
there's lots of imagery of storms and encroaching disaster and the shark looming ever closer and swimming underneath her bed and all of this imagery which just shows the level of anxiety and worry she's feeling about this impending um, episode that is going to happen to her mum. So we start the book off knowing something has happened to mum, so that's not a spoiler. Um, but Julia feels this level of responsibility and I don't think it can be underestimated that children do feel that. I know that adults uh, are responsible for children and adults are the ones who look after children, but so many children feel a level of responsibility to their parent or their carer or worry about their parent or their carer and feel like things uh, that they are responsible for taking care of them if they then can't take care of themselves. And you get that real and get that impression here through Julia. Throughout the book, we've got illustrations by Tonda Freston, which I'm going to do a sort of shot over. I'm hopefully I'm interspersed my talk here with some uh, footage of this book top down just to show you how lovely these illustrations are. Um, so there are some really nice small detail illustrations, but then there are these brilliant full page illustrations, particularly in the sections where there is a lot of uh, action or where the dream sequences happen. They really bring um, Kieran Millwood Hargrave writing to life. They kind of immerse you in those, those dream sequences, particularly. Um, very layered, textured illustrations, monochrome, which I thought was really effective and quite stark at times. Um, but I just, I love the combination of the, the writing and the pictures together. And they're very poetic parts when they go to sort of these whole page illustrations, as you might see as I'm flicking through the layout of the typeface changes, uh, especially in the dream sequences, and it does become poetic, I think, uh, in its writing style. But ultimately, this is a story about hope, about how we pull each other through the darkest of times, that there is light uh, if we can get ourselves through the darkest of times. And Julia, as you know, there's a very poignant moment when her dad tells her not to worry because everything's going to be okay. And she just says, I just can't help but worry. I know something's wrong. I know something's going to happen. I need to worry. And that's really heartbreaking because that's how we all feel about family, isn't it? We, we, you've been told not to worry, but you can't help but worry when you see someone is struggling, someone's having a hard time, either physically, mentally, emotionally. And that's the way Julia feels. But ultimately, by the end of the book, she realises and recognises that her mum's condition and the way her mum is, she can't fix that and it's not her job to fix that. But it is her job just to be there and to be in part of this loving family. And the family are portrayed really beautifully through these small little shared history moments. The book is narrated by Julia. She's, it's a first person narration and she gives us these snippets of their family history and their day to day in jokes and their, their their shared history and their shared love of each other and it's portrayed really nicely the book's written really well it's very readable really enjoyable and i think there are really good important messages in here i think it's a brilliantly written book it was really enjoyable read i loved the setting i loved the story and i really liked how sensitively the mental health was written about and dealt with in this book it's out on the 2nd of September. Again, just gonna put out there, I did receive this in exchange for an impartial review, but I knew it would be a great book and it is a great book. I will be getting my own copy when it comes out in September as well. If you like the sound of this, please leave a comment in the comments box below. And if you've never read any Kira Millwood Hargrave, why don't you pick up one of her books and give her a go? Normally her books have got an element of the magical or fantastical about them. This does, but it's very much a contemporary story. It's not a fantasy story, but there are very lyrical, magical moments mixed in, um, especially the way that the dream sequences work and the hunt for the shark and all the things that happen, which I don't want to talk about because spoilers, but it's not a fantasy book, which is unusual for her because a lot of her books have an element of adventure or fantasy or made up worlds. This is very much a real world situation and one that I think a lot of people will relate to. So, uh, if you like this video, please consider clicking like and consider subscribing to my channel for more middle grade recommendations. I do talk about my own reading, I do talk about other books as well, but um, I'm also really keen that children's literature and good children's literature is shared as far and wide as possible. So, 
hopefully I'll see you again here soon. Bye.